Patty, why is it important to look for life elsewhere? So what a great profound question it is that we've had for generations, for centuries, are we alone? You know, we have records of ancient philosophers trying to answer this question, just using their minds and what they could see with their eyes and no instruments. And it's been such an amazing journey to be able to put more and more science to bear on answering that question. So over thousands of years, our technology has gotten better. We have telescopes now. We have telescopes in space now. And we're learning more and more about our actual physical universe and being able to answer this question using real data. Uh, so here we are in a position to actually answer the question, are we alone, and be able to get a scientific answer that if it can't answer the question completely, can get us a few steps further along answering it scientifically. I think it's a really exciting time to be a scientist. So we're looking back at a successful Kepler mission. What do you think in this grand arc, arch of history will be the legacy of Kepler for answering this question? So we've always looked out at the stars, right? I mean, it's a very common experience to take your children out or your relatives or your friends. You look up, you look at the stars, you talk about what you see, the, the Milky Way, the constellations. We're always talking about the stars and we're wondering if there could be planets around those stars. Now for the first generation in history, we actually know the answer. Yes, there are planets. Planets are everywhere. I think the fact that Kepler was able to help us answer this question with such a plentiful answer of yes, yes, and yes is extremely exciting and really tantalizing. We're in a, on a, in a great position to take the next step and now say, what are these planets like as places? So we're also observing planets in our solar system, of course. What are the most important things we've learned in the last decade or so within the solar system about finding life elsewhere? Right, and it's so important because at the same time we're able to take this new technology and learn about stars other than the sun, we're also able to learn about the planets in our own solar system at the next level. And there's such a beautiful interplay between what we learn about our own solar system and how it could have evolved from the very beginning to be what we see now and that what we expect around other stars and exoplanetary systems. So now we're learning so much about water in our solar system. The fact that we're seeing those big moons around the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, they have many, many moons in their systems. And some of those moons have a tremendous amount of water, ice on the surface and probably liquid water below that. We have beautiful evidence of plumes coming out. Some of these, plant these moons have more water on their surface than the Earth. And we're so convinced, I mean, we only have our own planet to look at, but we're so convinced that life really needed water. Water was essential to the development of life here on this planet. We're going to be able to ask the next question about whether water in a place tells you that there could be life there, whether it's bacteria, by just interrogating these bodies in our own solar system, those large water-rich moons around Jupiter and Saturn. And we'll be able to use the answers to those questions to then further inform what we're expecting to see around small planets around other stars. Suppose we find life elsewhere. What are the kind of paradigms that we may question that we currently strongly believe in about life? we may not be looking in the right place right now because we're using only what we know about this one place where life exists. So we may be very surprised by the first biosignatures that we see. They may be very different from what we were expecting. And then we're going to have to put our pictures together to try to come up with this larger view of how life starts, what are the conditions that are needed, and how does it evolve. But one thing is sure. Every time we take uh, more data, we are more and more convinced that you know, what we're basing this on, that the laws of physics are the same everywhere, the laws of chemistry are the same everywhere, the laws of biology should be the same everywhere. So we don't know what we're going to find. But we should expect to find something, and we should expect for that to like, really expand our understanding. So yeah, the search for life is really about interrogating nature in a totally new way, kind of at the interface of physics and chemistry to biology. Any last comments about Kepler? I'm just so proud of the team. You know, it, it took many, many iterations of the idea to really have a reality, the reality of Kepler. And uh, it's just been so amazing that it was meant to answer the question of how common are planets. And the answer it gave us is that planets are incredibly common. They're everywhere. So it couldn't be a more exciting time to be an astrophysicist. I can't wait to see what the next step is. 
I really want to say, you know, congratulations to the Kepler team and the science community that got so much science out of these amazing data. It's just a, a journey that we can only imagine right now, but a journey that's very much worth going through and, and really exploring the universe in a totally new way. Thanks, Patty. Thanks to everybody.